Good morning everyone, this is the Audi Q4 e-tron 55 Quattro and today we're going to do a range test at 130 kilometers an hour. Uh, this car has an 82 kilowatt hour battery, 77 kilowatt hours can be used. It's based on the MEB platform, the same as the ID4, Volkswagen, Skoda Enya, Skoda Elrock, Cupra Tavascan, Ford Explorer and so on. And um, a charge to 100% at home. Uh, navigate it here and it should preheat the battery there's no button to manually preheat the battery I was hoping navigating here to Ionity will do it but I only get 16 kilowatt 17 at 92 percent so it doesn't look like it preheated too much <laughs> that's a bit sad um, so it will take a while and from 92 to 100 percent and then we're gonna go on the highway which is right here and then arrive on the other side Ionity with I hope a bit under 10 percent or around that number and then we'll see how the car is. Um, we have here all-wheel drive 250 kilowatt. This car has 20 inch summer tires already on 255 in the rear 235 in the front as all new MEB platform cars except for the ID3 but um, so the, the SUVs all have those tire dimensions. And yeah, we'll see how long this takes to 100%, maybe I only charge to 95%. It shows me the state of charge with 0.5, <laughs> the 93.5%. Okay, and still 20 minutes to 100%. That's a long time. I am on my way driving 133 on the speedometer and it's annoying to put that in the cruise control because if you use the switch under 80 kilometers an hour speed adjustment is 5 kilometers an hour steps and above it's 10 so you have to drive 133 and then turn it on that's annoying I reset my trip first 10 kilometers uphill as always started at 100% my climate is on 22 and a half and I noticed this is not eco for the heat and everything just for AC so on off AC this is all for the AC and I don't have an eco mode so it doesn't heat up the whole car so it, it like in Volkswagen where I can say please only heat up my my side no it heats up everything and in auto I already noticed that you cannot set the airflow so if you want less airflow more no it's just auto and that's it <laughs> it's at 22 and a half degrees it's 10 degrees outside it was just nine um, yep and we're gonna drive a bit and see what this car can do when it comes to range I'm at 75%, used 25% of the battery and drove 74 kilometers, so full range of 296 kilometers. Consumption is 250 watt hours per kilometer, average speed is amazing, haven't changed anything, traffic is amazing, I can drive the 133 the whole time perfect. I don't have to accelerate, I don't have to slow down. It's still 20 kilometers or so till I turn around the first time and then we go back and then in the direction of Munich, uh, not Munich, Munich and yes, let's go.
yeah that sucks uh, my usual exit was closed they're doing something construction so I had to go one further and um, if I would have known I never look never happened before and it's just for two days and one of those days is today yeah um, I would have gone off uh, one earlier because this exit has three lights two lights that I had to, to wait for each a minute uh, which of course makes the whole time and um, average speed go down that sucks look at them there they are working on my exit so how is the drive in the Audi Q4 e-tron and it's totally fine um, I have all my data in front of me this cruise control thing is weird that I cannot switch one kilometer an hour I'm also not a fan of the map here this tiny little map so this design you can't change this is how it is and this tiny little map is for nothing I can't see anything the, the icon what I am is taking up 10% of the screen and the worst thing is when you press it you don't get to the map it's just uh, if it goes to north or not so if you want to go to the map you have to press the, the navigation shortcut that's stupid I, I, I'm not a fan of this whole design and of the screen uh, there's a lot of weird things here <laughs> but the drive is nice cruise control works the same as in all MEB platform cars self-steering on the uh, uh, country road a few times when I drove I noticed that it doesn't recognize my touch very well but here on the highway it works now could be a warm cold day where it doesn't I don't know weird but it works totally fine the distance is nice self-steering is nice like I just said everything is good sound system is okay it's a bit quiet so I have to turn it up extremely to hear my podcast um, it's nice uh, noise level in here it's not too loud but I don't hear any difference to an ID4 or so so Audi doesn't have any advantages here I was just at 50%, drove 152 kilometers, so 304 kilometers of full range. Consumption is still around the same number, 248 uh, watt hours per kilometer, that's nice. It's a bit warmer now, 14 degrees, it's a bit more traffic, I have to accelerate a bit to pass cars when some, another car is coming. Um, soon we're gonna go in direction of munich like i said and then i'm gonna put in the gas station where we have to go back to the charger not the charger so it doesn't preheat the battery on the way back that our consumption is uh, real and not uh, the preheating in there It happened I turned around navigated back and this is what I mean so if I'm on my home screen here and it shows me the map at some point what do I see <laughs> I barely can see anything so I need the navigation yes I can have the navigation in my cockpit that's great but this here on the infotainment system is for nothing and I also noticed when you are I'm so negative with this car <laughs> um, when you are in the map the uh, zoom in is also weird so a kilometer before you have to get off the exit it zooms in to 30 meters view that's also totally stupid because you cannot see even the exit because you're exit exit because you're a kilometer away that's all weird if you're right at the point where you have to turn right this I get but that's weird it's whole weird. I love that I can see the elevation right in there and then when you press it tells you I arrived with 9% I don't have to press again uh, and I see the whole route I have to drive so this is cool I have 74 kilometers to go 133 no 103 kilometers of range 
Um, that is a 30, 29, no, 30 kilometers around that right now. So it should be the 9% that it says. It would be nice. Do you want to charge for free? Of course you do. And how can you do that? With NCharge. NCharge is an app where when you are at the charger, you can rate the charger and give the charging provider information about the charger. Is everything fine? Is it clean? Everything working? Is there a problem or anything? And the charging provider is very happy to make the infrastructure for every other EV driver amazing. And with that, you get stars and kilometers. And with this, you can charge for free. Check the link in the description below to download the app. I arrived with 11%, drove 280.9 kilometers. I have looked at Google Maps uh, a bit and I think it's uh, 279 kilometers, real kilometers, but I will do that all at home to be sure. 240 watt hours per kilometer was my average consumption. So with the data that I have gathered, I get to a range of 313 kilometers today at 11 to 16 and a half degrees. So pretty warm. I don't think that the heat did too much. It has a heat pump, this car, 20 inch summer tires. It's not too amazing, I have to say. Uh, I, I, you see the data here on the screen and it's very important because maybe my kilometers are off and then the whole range is a bit off, but it can't be too much. So I'll be talking about two, three kilometers or so, but you see the data here so that you know everything. Um, I'm doing a charging test right now and then I'm gonna do a, t a range test at 110 kilometers an hour. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, Battery Life One, and if you wanna support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube, there's also channel membership. And if you wanna know what's happening behind the scenes, I have a third YouTube channel behind the battery. But that's it for me. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.